the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Friends, next Sunday, we'll invite you to return to in-person worship here at St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church. And at the same time, many churches will open their doors again. Please let us know if you plan to attend and let us know by Thursday night on September the 10th. Even if you want to attend the eight o'clock service, please let us know in advance so we can prepare the lists for tracing. At 10 o'clock, we will work with a maximum number of 30 to begin with. If the maximum is reached, we will let you know. Be prepared also to be welcomed and led into the church. We will have ushers leading you in when we are ready to process your tracing information and they will also then seat you here in our sanctuary. If you have one, it would be nice if you could bring your own mask. We will remain socially distanced, and which is one of the hardest parts for me, there will unfortunately be no singing. We will begin with Holy Communion later after we've gotten used to these new procedures. But we will also try to keep as much as possible the way we're used to. At the end of our services, our ushers will also invite you to leave. And all this is to maintain social distancing and to make sure that we all stay healthy and that this service will be a place of positive, encouraging moments. Now, let us unite in prayer. O oh Lord God, during these challenging times, enliven and preserve your church with your holy presence and everlasting mercy. Without your help, we will fail and fall. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I guess we're having Sue here this morning again. Are you coming up, Sue? Come to the microphone. I'm excited to meet some of you next Sunday. You won't miss me. I'm the one with the mask. You're the one with the mask? Oh, Sue, everybody will be wearing their masks. That's not much of a giveaway. And by the way, are you afraid people wouldn't know you anymore? Well, Martin, it's been a long time. Oh, you're right on that one, Sue. It's been six months. And I thought in the beginning it would be six weeks. But next week we'll be together again, the people of St. Mark's and I. Sure. And it won't be just us. What do you mean, not just us? Who else will be going to be here? Is Willie going to come? Oh, oh, wait. I don't know about that. I don't know about Willie. But Jesus is going to be with us, like he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am here among them. I really like that we're not alone then. Yes, Sue, we are not alone. God is with us, Emmanuel, come what may. Amen. Amen. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our God, to thee we raise 
this our sacrifice of praise. And now let us listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of Matthew from the 18th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Good news, the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For each perfect gift of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven for thyself best gift divine to our world so freely given christ our god to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise And now may the love of God be our inspiration, and may God's goodness shine forth in our meditation. Amen. Friends, most of us will have heard the end of our gospel passage, and many of us will remember it quite well. These words I find to be especially meaningful these days as we prepare to return to worship in person next Sunday, we're planning for 30 at this point. All the thoughts and experiences will be there with us. And we've been thinking a lot over the last couple of weeks. I have heard and listened in to quite a number of email threads questions and thoughts about do I, do we really need church to come together on a Sunday morning? And what good does it do to go to church? I think, yes, these are important thoughts for all of us. What brings us together? Why do we gather? And Christ's words resound over all of our thoughts, over all of our ideas. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The context of these words, however, reveal, reveals a more challenging line of thoughts. Because Jesus offers practical advice in this passage practical advice on how to deal with our differences, how to address them in a fair and productive way. I want to offer two ways to apply what we have heard. First, these are comforting, encouraging words. The strength of the community of faith lies not in great numbers. And this indeed is a message that goes against much of what we hear and are taught to believe. 
It is an important message in our day and age where supposedly bigger is promised to be better. But Mother Earth suffers from that. We suffer. When restaurants think the bigger the plate, the better for the customer, we are the ones who overeat. Christ goes totally against these assumptions. Two or three are all right. One grain can produce fruit a hundredfold. In other words, don't be fooled by what they say. And never despair over your little power. God's power is made perfect in weakness, as St. Paul discovered. Sorry, but I need to say this. I hope Mr. Trump, who claims to be a Christian, has read the Apostle Paul. But it's clear to me that he never did. The second way to apply these words of the gospel today, where three or two are gathered in Jesus' name, he promises to be there among them. This comforting message comes in the midst of Jesus' teaching about something we do not find wonderful. Conflict. Conflict is tough. It gets my heart pounding. It induces fear. It puts me on the edge. But Jesus shows us a way to move beyond conflict. The 18th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is full of teachings on being a caring community. And by the way, Jesus teaches these things on the way to the cross where he reconnects us with the love of God. Reconciliation is the goal in Christian community. Jesus never tells us to stew over an offense or to initiate reconciliation by getting somebody else, a leader, to go and speak for us. Jesus teaches us to start the reconciliation process ourselves. And Christ also admits that happy endings are not guaranteed, and you know that I know this. It will not always end well. After three unsuccessful attempts at reconciliation, it is time to reset and maintain healthy boundaries. But never, never does anyone fall out of the reach of the love of God. What sometimes is made to sound so bad as if only one was right and worthy of love and the other is bad and unworthy of God's love is actually the opposite. All of us depend always on God's mercy. Nobody is perfect. And in our worst disagreements, we are to treat each other like someone needing Jesus' forgiveness, love, and new life. Just like people saw the peoples of different faith and tax collectors back then in his day and age. Jesus is present where two or three are gathered and work for reconciliation. We all have lots to forgive each other and to forgive ourselves. And such moments of reconciliation are super powerful. I still remember the many times when I finally went up to dad and apologized for something that had gone completely wrong. And he used to stretch out his hand for a handshake and said, let's shake hands, Martin. It's forgiven and forgotten. 
Christ wants for us to experience caring communities where conflict is not left to fester but relieved. And it is relieved when the wronged ones make the effort to love the offender with the reconciling love of Christ. Jesus has forgiven each one of us so much, knowing that and claiming his promise to be with us through both joys and conflicts, we can find the strength to love, to let go, to forgive. This is my prayer. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am thy love unknown has broken every barrier down now to be thine yea thine alone O Lamb of God Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, for the world God has entrusted into our care, and for all those in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, and responding with, hear our prayer. Let us see and experience the great unity in your creation, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation wherever possible. Bless all who work for reconciliation and wholeness in this community, in your church, and in all of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death, not only during this time of a pandemic. Shape in our hearts and minds new paths toward peace and cooperation. Teach us to recognize one another as neighbor, not as adversary. Teach us also ways to not harm your magnificent creation. Renew and enliven the things and places we have destroyed or harmed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Then to all in need, tend your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. After so many months of relative isolation and more to come, give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, in mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And then sustain us in our work and ministry as we follow in the footsteps of Christ, your Son, 
and our friend and brother. Help us to find the peace that leads to new beginnings in peace and harmony. Be with all who are joyful and happy, aware of the goodness you bring and enjoying it fully. Sustain those who grieve and struggle with loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so God promises us a great gift, peace of our hearts and minds, peace of our souls, whatever may happen. I guess that's why we love and appreciate that song so much, My Peace. My peace I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live, my peace I give unto you. Friends, after six months, we will end our pre-recorded services. It means that we might find back to a rhythm where Sunday is Sunday and we don't have to pretend on a Friday or any other day that it could be Sunday. I want to thank especially Sabrina and Steve for all your contributions and your participation. It's been amazing how we formed our own bubble during these months and I am so grateful for your participation and for who you are. Thank you both. And also thank you to Rebecca who is learning new things like being Sue and helping with the candles and things like that. Great job you do Rebecca. Thank you. Next Sunday we will still record the service but it will be different. It will be the real service and we also hope, I really do, that the technology will finally work and we might be able to live stream our services. We will send out emails with a notification how to do that, but it should be just as simple as you watching a recorded service. The difference is this will be in real time, so you would have to join us on Sunday mornings during our regular worship time at 10 o'clock. Over all this, over us, wherever we are and whoever we are, God pours out blessings of love and care. And so may the mothering God in holy presence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.